Hey y'all, it's Erica and I'm back with my second ever booktube video and I am here today to do my September wrap up even though we're like halfway through October but whatever, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to briefly talk about everything I read in September and if there's anything you'd like to see a full review of, please let me know in the comments. So without further ado, the first book I read in September, or finished in September, I really mostly read this in August, but it was The Enchanted by Rennie Denfield. Renee? Rennie? Again, I, I really need to start doing some research before I film these videos because I don't know how to pronounce names. Um, this was amazing. I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I will say it is not for the faint of heart or if you're squeamish, don't pick this up. It is basically a story about um, inmates in an old stone prison awaiting execution on death row and it kind of has these magical realism elements to it and it was just it was really it's really beautifully written I highly recommend it so five stars to this after that I picked up um, Italo Calvino's if on a winter's night a traveler I Wanted to love this book so much, y'all. Wanted to love it so much, and I really didn't. Um, I gave this two out of five stars. It's kind of a metafiction, uh, like postmodernist deconstructionist work. It's supposed to be, it's like touted as this book for book lovers. So I was like, yes, absolutely. I love, you know, books about books. And it's basically the beginnings of ten novels that are all interrupted in a moment of suspense. So you get like the first chapter of 10 different novels and interspersed with that is the story of the reader and the other reader and how they keep coming across these novels. So really awesome concept. Honestly, I couldn't get over the sexism in it. It was, I couldn't get over it. Um, so, two out of five stars to this. I know a lot of people love it, but it just was not for me in the end. After that, I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up, so I turned to, who else but Haruki Murakami, and I read Norwegian Wood, which I have never read before. Um, I've only ever read works of Murakami's that are, have his, you know, his brand of bizarre magical realism. So this is the first one that I've read that didn't have that element to it. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, his writing's still beautiful. He has excellent translators. Maybe it's just one translator. I don't even know. I need to look into that. But the writing's beautiful. The story, I really like the way that he looked into, you know, mental illness and how people deal with it in society. And this was just great. If you haven't read it and you're a Murakami fan, definitely give it a go. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. Um, after that, I just needed something quick and easy, and I had gotten Paper Towns by John Green on sale lately. Um, I really liked The Fault in the Stars, The Fault in Our Stars. I really wasn't that big of a fan of this. I can see myself, had I read this as a young adult, I really would have loved it, because, you know, it has that, like, mysterious girl, she's kind of a rebel... Thing going on but basically this is the story of Margot Roth Spiegelman and her friend Quentin and she goes missing and leaves this like treasure hunt for him he's obviously infatuated with her he's in love with her and you know he goes on this big hunt to find out where she has gone and why um, it was fine nothing great I gave it three out of five stars so then I picked up this little gem, which is A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian by Marina Luica. And this was really great. This is not at all what I expected it to be. It's a story of a family, and the father, in his very old age, remarries a 30-something blonde bombshell of a Ukrainian woman. And everyone, you know, his daughters are like, Dad, she's just using you so that she can legally immigrate into the country and I mean she just like she comes in and wreaks havoc on their lives and it was very touching and very funny all at the same time 
And it was very interesting to see how the family, you know, struggles to come together throughout the book. And I really recommend this. I might do a full review on this one because I don't hear it spoken of often. And I very much enjoyed it. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. Um, after that, I read something kind of similar. Well, it ended up being a little bit similar, but I didn't realize it was going to be. And that is The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. This book ruined me. Um, the only reason I say that it's similar to A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian is because both of them focus on World War II survivors or folks who had, you know, escaped Nazi-occupied territories during World War II, especially Eastern Europeans, so that was the similar vein between the two books. But this book was not... <laughs> I laughed out loud while reading A Short History of Tractors, this book, I like bawled like a baby reading this book. There's like one moment towards the beginning of this book that when I read it, I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. So this is basically a story about a man. Um, there are a few characters interspersed throughout the book, but this is essentially a story about a man who lives his life in a way that he does. So he doesn't want to die on a day when he hasn't been noticed. So he'll, like, go into grocery stores and purposely, like, knock over displays or, you know, like, trip and fall on the street to get attention because he wants to make sure that he doesn't die on a day when he was, wasn't was noticed, when nobody saw him. Which, I mean, in and of itself is heartbreaking. And it's kind of a love story about him and a young girl um, in, I believe, Poland, uh, pre-World War II. And how they kind of fell apart and came back together and then their lives were very different. And it's it's hard to, this book is hard to describe, but it is not that long. It's only, let's see, it's only like 250 pages and it's absolutely worth the time you'll spend reading it. It really, I very rarely cry, like actually cry while reading and this one, this ruined me. Um, I gave this five out of five stars because it is awesome. Um, after that, I did a little reread at the end of the month, and that was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Um, I really like to reread this book in the fall because it is, you know, it's got that, like, it's something good to, like, curl up with when it starts to get colder outside. It's got that, that creepy gothic element to it. Um, I love characters that are wholly detestable. Heathcliff, Heathcliff, Kathy Linton, they are some of the worst people in literature, in my opinion, and some of the, you know, they're like, they're the characters I love to hate, and I, I'll always love this book. Um, five out of five stars again. It's a good one. Um, I also read two, well, I read one comic book in September, and that is Batman Year One. This is done by Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli. Mazzuccelli? I, I don't know. Um, I've never read any Batman comics, so this was really fun. Um, I really like the art. You know, it's very kind of old school, and this is great. Um, it was a good story about, you know, the beginning of Batman, how he came to be. And I look forward to reading other Batman comics in the future. Um, I also read, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on screen. But I read, oh, this, this monster. This is Building Stories by Chris Ware. I know there was a lot of hype about this when it came out in 2012. And this, I might have to do a separate review of where I'm sitting a little further back from the camera. There we go. Now you can see it. Um, this is a box. It's kind of like a board game box. And inside, there are like 13 different pieces to the story. So it's a graphic novel. And you have like little pamphlets, like this guy. But then you also have like this big book is in here. Oops, that's upside down. Um, and like, you know, there's like a little book that's supposed to be like a children's, you know, the golden, the golden books from when you were a child. There's like one of these in here. 
really cute. Um, all kinds of stuff. There's 13 different pieces, and you're not given any instructions. So there's no order to read them in, but they all come together in the end and make a story. And I think it's really cool that everyone who reads this is going to have a different, a completely different experience. Even though you're reading about the same characters, when you read their stories in different orders, it changes, you know, it changes the effect of the story. So I think that's really cool. Also, the story itself is really, it's very tame. It's nothing, you know, like super gripping, but there's really good character development, which I appreciate. And it's just about, you know, it's a pun on the building stories is the title, and you're building the story with all these pieces. But it's also a story about a building, like, you know, an old apartment building and the people who live there. So you're kind of connecting their stories um, while you're building the story. Oh my gosh, this is getting really punny. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of control. So yeah, that is Building Stories by Chris Ware. He also did um, Jimmy Corrigan, Smartest Kid on Earth, which I'm hoping to read in the future. So yeah, that's all the books I read in September. We have mostly, mostly, most of my month is taken up by these guys here. And if you, again, if you want to see me do a full review of any of these, let me know. And I would be happy to do it. And um, comment, subscribe. Again, I'm Nudie Booktube, so if you have any advice or suggestions, please let me know. And I will see you all soon. Thanks. Bye.